My name's Foy Vance. I'm a singer-songwriter from Northern Ireland, and I've toured all over the world, but there's one place where the music keeps pulling me back for more, the USA. So I'm on a journey to visit different cities across the country to experience the best music, food, and culture that's on offer. This is Notes from the USA. Today, I'm in Portland, Oregon, a city well known for its sustainability creds and unique culture surrounding coffee, art, food, and live music. It's a major city with all the charms of a small town, but I'm keen to understand why this city in the country's Pacific Northwest has become renowned for its alternative approach to, well, everything. Arriving into town, I'm ready to explore Portland's alternative approach to music. And for me, there's no better place to do this than at Music Millennium in Portland's east side, a legendary live space and the oldest record store in the Pacific Northwest. Owner Terry Courier aims to continue the store's legacy. This is the live room here, right? This is, that's the mix. Yeah, we're gonna go into the room where the live music in. happens. We've done over four and a half thousand live performances. We try to get a lot of developing artists that are out there that are touring through in the store. It's given them an opportunity mm. so the younger audience could see them quick. Portland is a great place for live music. The Aladdin Theater is a great 600 sit down club. Doug Fur down the street and Mississippi Studios holds about 250. People that come to Portland, they're, they're pretty open-minded. I mean, the alternative sound in Portland isn't the same from one band to another. The other word other, other than alternative and indie that comes up is punk. I grew up through the, the first wave of punk. That was never a sound either. It was an ethos. It was a yeah. It was a way of being. It was a way of thinking. You'd have a country punk band. Uh, you'd have a noise band. Uh, you'd have bands that created big mosh pits out there. And Portland never really had a sound. You just had a lot of people with open-minded ideas. Bands can have a sound, but the songs really matter. Amen. My stop at Music Millennium made me hungry for some more live music. And luckily, in Portland, that's easy to find. To learn more about the live music scene here, I speak to those who are living it firsthand. Local punk band, Spoonbenders. What do you think it is that makes Portland a hotbed? Everybody knows everybody, and it's not genre-specific, which is makes for a better music scene. Uh, you can come to Portland and have a really good time. There's like really good country, hardcore, yep. yeah. Like psych, obviously. Or really cool band. noise. Electronic bands are coming up. Pretty much find a show or something every single night. People are amazing here. Like everyone's really friendly and they'll help you out and they'll tell you where to go and you just gotta go to the local shops talk to the local people and support the local businesses. It's also one of the best places that you can appreciate uh, local music. And what's your sign, Dan? Usually it's rowdy and usually it's loud and it's really fun. Portland's alternative music scene is thriving, but that counterculture attitude isn't exclusive to the music. Vegan food is huge in Portland. And from food trucks to taquerias, it feels like you can make it vegan anywhere in the city. We're Boxcar Pizza. We opened in 2020. We're a vegan choice style restaurant. Portland has just has always sort of had that culture of alternative food styles. Yeah, I've been here for about 12 years. I've just seen the scene blow up. Just a lot of cool people coming to town, opening up any kind of non-vegan food you can imagine with doing it vegan. It's not all about the city centre though, so I take advantage of Portland's close proximity to nature and head out to Multnomah Falls to meet with Good Trip Adventures guide, Lauren Skonitsny. Hi, Foy. Nice to meet you. Great to meet you, welcome to Portland. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, this is the Columbia River Gorge, we're here at Multnomah Falls. It's incredible to have this so close to a city. It's only about 30, 40 minutes outside of Portland. We have all this beautiful nature. Do you get many artists coming out? We do, yeah. I think a lot of people draw inspiration from places like this. It's so dramatic, so inspiring. 
There's something about just watching water fall that I think appeals to like a really deep part of ourselves. So tell me a bit about Good Trip. What is it exactly you do? So Good Trip Adventures is a guiding company that um, I help run and that I work for as a guide. So we take folks out to national parks, national recreation areas, everything from a single day to come out to hike all the way up to multi-day backpacking tours. We also teach about geology, human history, natural history, really try to add a, a full picture of these places that folks are visiting. It's a woman and queer owned company. I'm one of those owners myself. Places like this, waterfalls, rivers, have inspired generations and generations of indigenous people as well, and the music and the culture that they draw from that connection to the land. So being unique, being alternative, it's something we do really well here in Portland, from our waterfalls and our natural spaces to our music, to our food and our culture scene. Maybe your waterfalls sporting a pride Yeah, pride. heck yeah, man. Well, before you leave, why don't we head up to the bridge and get a closer look? I'd love to. For my last stop in Portland, it felt only right to meet a local sports team that embodies Portland's unique approach to life. Roller Derby is a roller skate and contact sport that fuses music, lights and skate action into one epic experience. Local team, the Rose City Rollers, give me the lowdown. First things first, I call you by your names or your skate names? In this building, it's, yeah. it's Derby names. So I'm Darth Molly when I'm here. I'm a regulate her. I am domesticated. That's pretty I good. Like it. I, honestly, that's pretty good. <laughs> it's very open and welcoming to anybody and everybody, whether you've been to 100 games or never even heard of the sport before. Portland's music scene is very diverse, along with the same as Derby. There's a diverse community, and music is very integrated because it just changes the way you're like feeling about a game. Is there like a key song that gets played? Each team has like a rollout song that they'll skate to that they pick that encompasses what their team's about. The music connects the crowd a lot too. Our DJ is very good at, he plays music that sets with the vibe of the game. So when it's, you know, that last jam, that last minute, there's gonna be an intense song that's playing that's getting everybody all hyped up. You can listen to somebody talk about Derby all day. You can try to watch it on a computer screen, but it's not gonna feel the same. You have to be here in person to truly appreciate what Derby is. I'm joining the team. It's official. Let's go. I'm wrecked already. Yeah. <laughs> You're going fast. <laughs> After visiting Portland myself, I understand why this city is renowned for its alternative way of doing things. It's a place that celebrates individuality and creativity and makes a point of doing everything just a little bit different. From the food and music to sports and art and even just city life itself, Portland's unique approach to everything makes it a must visit. <laughs> <laughs>